Hey, hello, hey. sir. How are you doing? Hey, welcome to Maine. All right. Oh Good my to goodness, see you. Good it's to see wonderful to be in. here. Come on in. It took me all day to get here, but well, finally we're here. Hopefully, it's worth it. Wow. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, it's just really great that you've uh, taken the time to come up and visit. And thank uh, you, thank you. It's great to be here. So, so here this we are. Is this it. is this is where I work. Wow. Um, and this is where I do the actual, you know, making of prototypes and things like that. Wow. So, uh, you know, I have basic equipment. M mostly mm -hmm. it's my computer. You know, today everything okay. is a computer. But I still see yeah, the machine. Oh, yeah. Machine, yeah you know? Oh, yeah. Here's a band saw, you know, sanding equipment, drill yeah, press, yeah. other sanders. Wow. And here is here is my, my uh, pride and joy right here. My little milling machine. Wow. So this is a kind of a junior milling machine, but it's uh, it's perfect for me because I only do uh, small things, but I can cut metal, wood, wow. uh, plastic with really great precision. So I can do wow. a lot of work that uh, we wouldn't be able to do otherwise, mostly because of this machine. So wow. other than that, it's it's pretty much woodworking equipment. This is kind of a, wow. a metal working tool, but you can also work with wood and plastic. And also mm. a little lathe, that's mm. important. So wow. all of this is very light duty wow. equipment. You know, it isn't, this isn't production equipment, but uh, it enables me to work out ideas, you know, and to wow. actually uh, create the original models. And that is really amazing. I mean, just to, uh, to, to play the finished product, I mean, it's just amazing now to see where everything is coming from, and, uh, and well, the thing it, it's is really too amazing. that you know I, I love making musical instruments because I, I can make something that is just you know pieces of wood and plastic and metal, yeah. and they're just really pieces of wood, plastic and metal. But then when a musician uh, takes control and yeah. uses that as a tool, then it becomes magical. But of course, it isn't really magical, it's just wood, plastic, metal, put together in a way to try to make it serve as a tool for musicians. And so I, that's what I really enjoy that's doing. Amazing. And this is, this is where I do it, you know? That's amazing. I mean, like for me, this is like the first time I see where the instrument made and, and everything, cause you know, <laughs> I just get it and play, but you know, to to have an understanding and see how you put together, it's really amazing, and it's such an honor for me to come here and see all of this. Well, the honor is all mine. And I love the too. basses very much. I mean, well, thank these you, instruments they sound unbelievable, and I'm so grateful and honored. Well, uh, we feel the same, and uh, so what we're going to do while we're here yeah. is, is take a look at some of the things. You know, one of the, we were, you know. Uh, you know, this instrument here is kind of interesting because this is, I mean, this is a guitar, and w what, you know, you talk about making the instruments, but this guitar was created almost entirely on the computer. That wow. is to say that the design was made on the computer. Wow. Uh, actually, I take that back a little. Let me, mm. let me grab something down here because this, wow. the, the way this is created in this case is that this drawing was made on the computer that was glued down to this piece of wood, uh -huh. okay? And this is just a piece of cheap pine. It's just, as not, and you can even see here, this yeah. is some plastic uh, uh, wow. um, putty or whatever that I added to it so that I could, I could play yeah. with the shapes uh, yeah. in, this, in this model, which is never intended to be actually used as a musical instrument, but only as a way to develop the ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the initial idea was in the computer. You could see it there. Mm -hmm. And then I, I reworked it by hand and I made a neck for this too, which you don't see here yeah, all, yeah. Uh, just to test out the ideas. And then once I was satisfied that I had the form that I mm -hmm. wanted, then uh, the original drawing that I put into the computer and also was combined with it. You, you see these squares here yeah, in the yeah. back? Yeah, yeah. This is where it was all digitized. Wow. So this guitar here, actually, because, you know, mm. I sp I've been around for a while, and I, I definitely yes, yes. Uh, predate uh, 
you know the computer, uh, the use of computers for machining and so on. But this was made entirely on a computer in the end. I, I never. It, it it was like you know when I was a kid, I was into model airplanes. You know you balsa wood. You know you could, mm -hmm. and uh, it was control line or you know. Uh, gliders or yeah, yeah, other yeah. kind of thing. So you buy the kit at the store and put it together. So I did all the, I provided all the, the uh, data points for this instrument wow. and I sent it out to the guy who has the computer controlled machining center. And it wow. came back like parts in a, um, in a model airplane kit. So all I had to do was screw it together. Wow. I, I never uh, that was the first time I've done that. That was maybe, um, you know, uh, six or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Of course, people have are, are been doing that in advance of my uh, getting to that point. But, hmm. you know, uh, times have changed a lot, and, and computers are a very, very big part of, of all that we do these days in design and fabrication. Wow. So this was uh, just really all so the beautiful. very first one, too. Um, in the past, I've made the initial model by hand completely, and then it was computerized. But now, just starting right out with the computer. So it's wow. uh, times are changing, and it's just and the amazing. results are yeah. very, very um, you know. Although computers are impersonal and they don't have the the, the craft values or whatever, but boy, do they ever do a good job. <laughs> You know, that's I the tell thing. you a great job. But now tell me about these holes. I mean, okay. like these holes it, here. Okay. Yeah. Because so, it really looks cool. It looks like I can just play it like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it it plays wow. fine like this. But this is the first prototype of, of our NS guitar, yeah. uh, and it has a maple body. The reason it has a maple body is to, in order to, to uh, take advantage of the kind of intensity of the. Um, uh, you know the energy mm -hmm. in uh, maple is, is is very strong as opposed to lighter weight woods which um, don't have quite the uh, the drive that the maple has so I wanted to use maple but the problem with maple is that when you have a body this size a solid body instrument mm -hmm. can get pretty heavy and there's a wow. there's a um, a balance in there in terms of weight you know weight a super light electric guitar is uh, mm -hmm. not really what people are looking for. It doesn't have this. It, uh, it, the weight has to do with the sound, all right? So all right. you want the right weight, and it would have been too heavy. So that's why these holes are drilled in it. it yeah. It's kind of like um, uh, a honeycomb construction. But in production, we put a top layer on this, so you don't see these holes. I mean, oh. it, may, it may be fun for us to you know see the holes now and it's kind of cool but uh, it's not really yeah uh, uh, production ready at that but it needs to have a cover on it so your base has these holes in it too you know you're not aware of it but that's in order to provide that maple body yeah. that gives you that really uh, clear resonant sustained kind yeah, of sound. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about this ba the basses. It's so clear. I mean, this is something now I'm learning about really understanding what's all of that because these basses are so clear and, you know, and, and just the tone is just unbelievable. So that has to do with the, the wood and then the way everything is. Yeah, well, it, wow. it's, uh, it, certainly the maple is great for resonance, for sustain, yeah. for clarity for consistency from note to yeah. note. So this is the reason I use the maple, but wow. it gets kind of heavy. And so this was the solution to, and, and that's what, you know, uh, musical instruments are one big compromise. Yeah. Uh, everything, you know, uh, you, you want to use the maple, but then it gets too heavy. So then you figure out how to reduce the weight of the maple by, mm -hmm. you know, different means. Maybe other people have different ways of doing it, but, um, you want to come up with that that mix that really mix, is yeah. optimal. Uh, so that's what uh, what this construction is all about. Wow, uh, years ago, uh, I got the idea of creating uh, a uh, a musical instrument mm -hmm. uh, that was essentially a different kind of keyboard. 
instead of having the keyboard linear going in, in you know from low to high yeah. I pictured a keyboard which was uh, somewhat more like a finger like a uh, the frets on a musical uh, on a on a guitar where you would have the ability to play you you, you know the notes would go sideways and they go yeah. up and down so you could play all kinds of, uh, of combinations that you could not play on a conventional keyboard yeah. but one of the things I learned in the process, and I also I built an instrument at one time, a, a sustaining guitar, where you could have infinite sustain. You pluck a note and it sustains forever. But what it, I came to, to understand a little bit better is that just playing a, a, a clean, constant note is, is not what music is really built on for the most part it's mm. built on all kind of nuance you know when you play the string on a guitar you know you can play harmonics if you put your pick a certain way you yeah, can get all yeah. kinds of different yeah. uh, responses depending on how you're feeling how you're playing, how you're playing so those that? idiosyncrasies of uh, of a string instrument are what is makes it so special why the, the whole you know People invented keyboards that could sound like a guitar, mm -hmm. but why? Why isn't everybody playing a keyboard? Because you can't duplicate all the nuance, all yeah. the the kinds of uh, personal interaction that a musician has with their instrument when it's uh, capable of so much uh, different subtle changes in tone and attack and so on. So. That's right. You know, music is obviously about sound, but I've, as a maker of musical instruments, I've come to think of it as the the. It's not so much the. It's not as much the sound as is the way that a musician can express, express yeah. him or herself yeah. with the instrument. So it, yeah. the pure sound is one thing, but the way it. Way it, you can interact. Yeah, because you want to work. Yeah, you want to work with the instrument the feeling and that the you feeling. Can exactly. Yeah. So, um, and that's what yeah. you know. I think one of the reasons why electric guitars and electric basses are are such a big part of music is that, on the one hand, you get connected to the electronics. You know, you're in the modern age, mm -hmm. and you can do so many things with an electric instrument, but still. It's a string, and you pluck it this way, it sounds that way. You pluck it this way, it sounds a little different. Mm -hmm. And all that nuance is what music is really about, because that's where the expression comes in. But, I mean, you know this much better than I do, although maybe, you know, I think about it a little differently as more of a technician, you know, as a technician yeah. Yeah. making tools for artists, you know. What is it that artists really need? And in some kind of strange way... Maybe I even understand some things that musicians don't understand about what they need because it's my business. You know, your business is to make music. Yeah. My business is to but it's, make it's, musical it's instruments. It's too yeah. because the musician really need a good tool to, to perform. You know, when you don't have a good uh, tool, you know, it, it's always hard. So it's really great to have somebody like you to build this and then let me play and just make sure that I connect with the instrument because it's already it's already there and I just have to really recognize the sound and, and, and you know and go with what I'm hearing and then you know make it happen you know so it's two people you know the builder well that's the, the beautiful thing absolutely you know and, oh, and uh, certainly uh, a bass player would be uh, in pretty sad shape without a bass to play, and a bass maker would be in pretty sad shape without a musician to play it. I mean, so we are yeah. completely independent, uh, in interdependent rather, not independent. Uh, and um, so, yeah. anyway, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to have you here. Thank and you. I want to uh, take you upstairs because we got a lot. I've got a lot of different uh, instruments from uh, that I've made to, over the years, I can't and wait to uh, see a lot of stuff. so. And I mean, see, look at this. This is <laughs> this is the beginning, and then when it's finished, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Well, right? this is actually um, this isn't quite the beginning, but it's pretty yeah. close. Wow. Um, 
again, it, it's uh, it generally these days starts with uh, well, well, actually, the first violins I made were just a stick. There was no body whatsoever. No body. Wow. Uh, and, and that's when I was uh, you know working uh, when I still had the Steinberger Sound Company mm -hmm. that, I, that was my original business built uh, violins that were in the uh, kind of tradition mm -hmm. of those those early instruments but this is the evolution of that into something that um, is uh, really uh, much more advanced over my original work mm -hmm. and that's the thing it, it's always you're, I'm always trying to take it to the next level figure out you know a way to uh, create something that you know is got a great tone obviously that's the starting point it's also got to have a great feel yeah uh, it's got to feel good because I tell you know you the that, way the yeah. way you play it I mean all I mean again it's you know getting back to the whole thing it's not just sound it's the way that a musician is able to manipulate the sound to to interact with the sound yeah. to get you know connected to, to it connected. so it feels good it feels mm -hmm. right that's that's huge mm -hmm. and of course the other thing that uh, musicians often uh, don't think about that much mm -hmm. because it's just a natural thing but it's got to it's got to look the part too you got mm -hmm. it's got to be something you have an aesthetic appreciation for because yeah. it's going to yeah. affect you know the way you feel about an instrument yeah. is going to affect the music that you make with it so even if it had the greatest tone in the world, the greatest feel in the world, yeah. if it wasn't somehow something that you can relate to physically, you know, looking at it and feel good about it, then it's not going to sound the same as it would if you really yeah. felt good about yeah. it. Because yeah, you, no, you know, it's you all about feel feeling. Really, Music is exactly. all about feeling. So the feeling that the instrument creates for for an artist is is as important as anything else. So it, it's all mm. interconnected. You so are very important. Sir. The other thing is that yeah. um, my uh, philosophy of making instruments is that ideally the instrument disappears. Mm -hmm. In other words, it disappears for the musician, especially maybe not for the audience. But if the instrument is really working well, it becomes part of the musician, part of the process, and it doesn't have a separate identity. It does, and that's one of the reasons I I've made them minimal and uh, kind of um, not that flashy because mm. it's not about the instrument no. it's about the music it's about uh, the musician so tools should not take front stage they take they they are supporting it's a little like a bass playing is generally supportive too I mean it, it has different dimensions but mm. so there's kind of parallel there um, just trying to make something that is so comfortable, yeah. so natural, and that your consciousness of it goes away and you just play it and yeah. that's that's it. Anyway, let's head upstairs I, and we'll take a look at some, some uh, other things that, that uh, and be uh, careful, this is not, <laughs> these are not the most, uh, I don't know if uh, OSHA oh. would approve of these stairs. So this is uh, where the magic happens, huh? <laughs> oh, this is this is where I test them out, basically. Oh, uh, this is where oh. We have to check out some, some different. Oh my God! Yeah, no, well, this is. Uh, what? This, this is. <laughs> oh my goodness! Lots of experiments here. Uh, wow. Not all of them successful uh, by any means, but uh, I learned something from every single instrument in here. Yeah, I learned important lessons, and uh, a lot of these instruments I build just for that purpose, to, to, as experiments to try to uh, learn about some of the ideas that I'm interested in and whether they work or not. Uh, but the only way you really do it is to, to build something and try it out. So, um, you know, you see a lot of uh, upright bases here, but Man, also you, okay. see, you see the box space here, which is a lot of Yeah, that's of like the old school uh, where they used to put the food in, uh, on top of the, the plywood and with one string, they move the string. Oh, you're the, talking about the, a, the old, uh, old bass? A, uh, a washed up bass. Yeah, the washed up with the, uh, it had like the T. Uh, you know, I pulled plywood. something out of the closet that uh, I thought you might be interested in. Especially 
Because when we, uh, I saw you earlier today, and you were, you have that. Um, the kalimba. Kalimba, the electric one, right? Yes. yes. So uh, it reminded me of an instrument uh, that might be fun to show you. Okay, so the, oh. it's a electric wash tub bass. I would love to see okay. it. So, and this, I made this about, uh, oh, God, 15, 20 years ago, just for fun. You know, again, a lot of this stuff is for fun. Uh, you know, some of it's pretty serious, but some of it isn't. Wow. So, let's see if we can get this thing working here. So, look at that, it just clipped right wow. in there, that's, that's it right there. So then, uh, you could just stick this, now, you can, you can put your foot on here, I think, you see what I mean? And you can set and I'll plug it in and we'll see what happens. Whoa. This is the original bass. I mean that's it's it's as simple as you can get, that's for sure. Let's see if we can get some sound out of it. It's called uh, um, Stranger to Stranger. Yeah. There's a song, it has that uh, wolf sound. It makes that kind of sound. Wow, anyway, this, this is amazing. It's basically, you know, you're washed up. You know, stick and a string and, and uh, I actually at one point I made fancier washed up basses. I made all kinds of crazy stuff over oh, the you years. Gotta make, you gotta make one for me like this. Wow. And it sounds like you can hit like a, like a, almost like a billion ball. Yeah, like the, the didgeridoo, yeah. Yeah, right, like a didgeridoo, yeah. And you can also do that too, you can give it also finger, yeah. You have too much trouble oh my right goodness. now, you should turn the treble right now. Let's try that. Introduce this to Paul. He will be loud because he's all about the sounds. Oh, so like when that song came this, this one is this one is available. <laughs> it's been sitting on my shelf for. I will play. Years. I will play that. Yeah, definitely. Right. Wow. All right. And you know, one thing you can you can see you can stick this. You get different if you put it closer. It's it, it's more. Oh, you can like higher pitch. Further away, then it's more. You know, so wow. it, it changes, you know, a lot. And I also have a nylon string for it, too, which wow. gives it a very different kind of sound. So what kind of string is that? Is? This is just a bass string. You know, it's like a, I don't know, an A string or something like that. Wow. Wow. But, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's a uh, piece, of wood, piece of wood that's worth absolutely nothing. A couple pieces of wood that are worth absolutely nothing. A piezo pickup that's worth a, a piezo uh, sensor that's worth a few dollars. Man, and that's it. It's, it's, that's it's, it. It's, it's there's nothing to it. So uh, if you can figure out something to do with it, that would be a real blast. Oh no, I'm make concerned. music with this. Between that and the kalimba, I can make some uh, beautiful music. Fantastic. This, okay, this, well, this is beautiful. We'll make sure you uh, get to take it home with you. Now, I see the other stuff. Now, Matt, tell me about this big box. Oh, 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 whoops. Sorry. We've got a problem here. We've got a, we've got a, a, a hot little crystal there. It doesn't like the electricity. Here we go. Also, you just put the strings. It's 
just a string that's yeah. in, in the store for here. It wow. Do, and that's the that's the piezo here right there. That's the pickup. And that's like, what makes that beautiful sound. Piezos, uh, you know, the yeah. truth of the matter is that uh, electric bass players tend to have a very um, negative attitudes about piezo. Not mm. all, not all bass players, but a lot of mm. bass players. But I don't think uh, people fully appreciate the potential of this type of pickup because it is much mm. wider frequency response than uh, uh, electromagnetic pickup. Mm -hmm. And you know, magnetic pickups are terrific. I, I certainly, I mean, that they're. So much wonderful music has been made with them over the years. I am, I'm the last person to be trying to um, criticize them or anything. But on the other hand, this pickup has the potential to do create a whole another palette of sound. That, hmm. um, but it's a little bit uh, different because a, a magnetic pick pickup has a, a very pronounced mid range, yes. which parallels acoustic instruments. And is is easier to you could just kind of plug it in and get your sound. But you notice I was turning down the treble there mm -hmm. uh, because this thing has so much treble compared to a magnetic pickup, but it also has so much bass. This thing will track flat down to one two cycles. Wow. I mean it's it's really quite an unbelievable technology. But we haven't really uh, completely figured out how to harness it. You know for for the pleasure of mm -hmm. of uh, musicians because again it you, you have to kind of you have to work with it yeah, in order to get yeah. it to do what you want it to do but it will do just about anything if you can figure out how to direct it so I, I still remain very big on these this piezo system and of course for bowed instruments the piezo is what has created uh, the new world of electric bowed instruments. Wow. You know, when I started making uh, the double basses, mm -hmm. bass players told me not even to bother trying to get a good uh, uh, arco sound. You know, don't, you know, it's, you, play, you can make electric bass sound good in uh, pits, but you're never going to get it to sound well in arco. And, mm -hmm. um, but it's not true. And if you learn how to harness the power of these piezos, you get fabulous arco sound, as has been shown by players yeah. who be I mean, like right now, this thing sounds amazing. Either. Well, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do so you yeah, tell me about this big box, uh, the, okay. the, the drum, right. drum, All right. so, drum bass. Oh, what, what do you call that? Wow. Well, I call that a drum bass, I call that a box bass. A box I mean, bass. You know, whatever. It's a box and a drum. But mm -hmm. the, the the way I got started on these, again, they're not, they're, they're like the, uh, you know, the, the washed up, the mm -hmm. electric washed yeah, up. Yeah. They're not that serious, okay? They're more, but Just they are experiments that I learned from at the same time. So I'm not expecting, you know, the world to start playing box basses or drum mm -hmm. basses, but I learned from making them, I learned from interacting with yeah. musicians who, who check them out. And the idea, first of all, this this is what I started with here was the drum bass and what I discovered when I started making upright basses mm. is that um, the bowed, the input from the bow and the input from a, a plucked string, mm. bowed string or plucked string, they just they they operate very differently, and if you want to optimize the pickup for a bowed string, you have to uh, be sensitive to side to side vibrations. Yeah. Uh, that's what because the bow drives the string side to side. And again, I was talking earlier about how the piezo was the, the kind of the building block of a modern bowed electric instrument because a magnetic pickup picks up up and down vibrations mm -hmm. but that's not what you need for a bowed instrument and those up and down vibrations if you think about a a uh, let's say a flat top guitar which has a, a flat top mm -hmm. that's all it does it does up and down yeah. you, know, you know because that's that's what the membrane is vibrating mm -hmm. that works really well for a plucked instrument because it tends to suppress the attack a little bit and then as the string starts to move, so you get kind of a more sustained
same kind of a sound. But on a double bass, as I'm sure, you know, I don't know how much you might have thought about it in these terms, but the characteristic sound of a, of a, a double bass when you pluck it is the big attack, right? Yeah, right away. It yeah. uh, has a big upfront uh, attack and then it, it decays fairly quickly from there. So, um, I, I began to learn about all this through experimenting with the electronics and of course the system would develop for the upright basses. I have a switch so you can go from a, a, a pickup that's sensitive side to side which is optimum for the bow mm -hmm. and which gives you a, a pit sound which is a very percussive but then you can flip the switch and you can control the attack reduce yeah. the attack and have a little bit more of a sustained even kind of sound so uh, I thought to myself and this is what again the learning process not just about how the instrument works but about what a musician is looking for you know for me, I was thinking, well, this the the, the upright bass this isn't really making any that much sense, you know, to play at pits. It was designed to be bowed, after all, you know, upright bass is traditional. Upright bass is designed mm -hmm. to be bowed. That's what they were made for originally. But now all these musicians are using them plucked, and they're really enjoying that. And there's something really good going on there. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, so I began to understand the importance of that percussive sound and how that was part of the music that you guys were making with those instruments. But I thought to myself too, you know, maybe there's a, a way to make an acoustic instrument, acoustic bass, uh, that um, has uh, less, percussion, less percussion and more sustain and but also more volume and this is also this this pickup system on this mm -hmm. instrument is something that I call a, a stress-free system in that if you notice these strings they if you look at them from the side you'll see that they don't pull down on the bridge they don't pull up on the bridge yeah. they don't put any stress on the bridge at all they're held into the bridge by these angled slots that so they're they're yeah. kept in position yeah. so you can have a very loose top, and this isn't pushing down on it or, or restricting it in any way. Mm. Um, and so I thought, what's the loudest, ba a loudest acoustic bass I could make? And and this thing is pretty loud. Check it out. I mean, wow. it's, I'm not saying it's all that useful, but it's it's. Uh, around all over the place it's kind of crazy but it's fun oh man this is really fun oh so when you play down there you get much mm. wow and the sound i mean like of course you get the the, the, the drum sound as well It was real simple. I mean, the basic stuff. Wow. Uh, you know, just taking advantage of the, the resonance of a drum. And, you know, you can adjust the response, of course. You know, you can change the tuning of the head and all that stuff. So, um, like when I play this note, I can uh, uh, hear the, 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 this, the drum skin. It's got that echo. That, yeah, no, you know, it's very echoey, yeah, very, yeah. very, uh, and that's, I, I, you know, it's, it's not all that useful for, for, yeah. for most music, but it's, it's fun, and wow. uh, this is it, it's an experiment. So, this bass yeah. here uh, was, uh, I was thinking, you know, why do you have to have a $10,000 bass, 100,000, you know, acoustic basses get very, you know, they're, Mm -hmm. Beautifully sculpted and so on. Like what? Mm -hmm. What about just making something really basic, mm -hmm. really cheap? When, and what could you, you know, build a box? I, you know, a speaker is a box. You get a lot mm -hmm. of sound out of a speaker. So I just, I just thought I'd try that. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, 
Wow. You know, this... It uh, looks cool. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a little Oh, different. and the sound. Whoa. Oh my goodness. sound is amazing. Goodness, this is beautiful. This is really awesome. Well, wow. it's um, uh, I mean, the yeah. sound is just so organic. Wow, what well, it's a learning experience for me, and I learned that I mean, really, what I set out to do, I didn't accomplish. I was looking to keep even more volume yeah. than I was able to achieve. But I learned, you know, this has a stress-free bridge on it too, so I was experimenting with that concept and seeing how I could apply it. And I learned that uh, it's pretty interesting, but uh, it doesn't really, never really quite, you know, went where I wanted to go with it. But I'm going to send you uh, this uh, bass. I bought it, uh, uh, a friend of mine bought it uh, in um, Morocco. It's a gimbri. It's like, uh, you know, an old bass. It's got the stick like, like the one I just played. Yep. But it's called the Gimbri. And it used uh, the guard strings. It's like the, the nylon or, or plastic strings. Yes. But you have to pull the string. The string is tied like this. And then um, the strings is like that. And then you have this string so you can pull it to get a different note. Oh, I see. To okay. tune it. But it's got the bridge. The bridge is almost like this kind of bridge. Uh -huh. But it collapses all the time. But I'm, I'm going to send it to you and see what you can do with it. Okay. It's called sure. the gimbal. It's only three strings. So what strings. keeps the string from sliding back again? You have to keep holding it up. Yeah, you have to keep holding them up. Uh, uh, and then once once you get a note, you tie it. It's, it's, it's see. like a handmade uh, bass that was, you know, built in Morocco. It's got the three strings and then they're all like different, uh, you know, like maybe the higher string is low and then you got the middle string and then, you know, the other string, the lower string. But it's, it's very interesting. I'm going to send you a video of it and, uh, when I get home. Okay. And then maybe even send yeah, you the uh, game, like what you can do, because it's really amazing. I wonder what you think about the sound of this bass. Of this one? Yeah. Sounds good? Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, and no. this this is still uh, in the process. Well, no, this actually this I, this has been sitting around here for a long time. I thought you might enjoy it. Wow. Uh, this was my original concept for an electric upright. This is what I thought mm. I want. This and I always I make mock-ups of the instruments. I don't try to make an instrument right away because I yeah. want to experiment with the shapes yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. the form and everything. So this is just made out of out of the simplest materials, but. Uh, what I did here was I made a classic error, and that is that I didn't, you know, I, I got into headless bass guitars, right? Mm -hmm. You know, from, from back in the 19, late 1970s is when I first started yeah. making them. And so I got really excited about headless bass guitars for the balance. The main thing about a headless bass guitar is the balance. It makes it, it's just all those balance issues with the neck dive yeah. and everything, you yeah, know, yeah, as you know, they're gone, balance, right, yeah. when you go to headless. So I went to make an upright, but I made the same mistake that I kind of um, uh, I saw in other people. For example, when they went to make electric guitar, people make electric guitars, but they started out with hollow bodies, and you know they followed. They made electric guitar like an acoustic guitar. Didn't really make sense. 
And so I always was thinking, you know, what makes sense? What can you, how can you make something mm-hmm. that really has kind of integrity? Uh, you know, like an acoustic guitar, traditional acoustic guitar has huge integrity. There's reasons for everything. It developed over hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, but what I did in this case was I got so in the habit of making headless instruments, when I went to make an, uh, an electric upright, I figured it had to be headless, mm-hmm. but it didn't really make any sense. It's actually more convenient to tune up here than it is to tune down here. And there are no balance issues that, like with an uh, electric bass guitar. Yeah. So it took me a little while, to, but I finally said, you know what? No, this doesn't actually make sense. It should have a headstock. Yeah. So this was uh, yeah, a because, stepping stone, yeah. you know, to to making yeah. something that really made sense. So this, for me, is kind of a lesson, you know, wow. what not to do. You know, don't just do what you did before. Yeah. Whatever you're going to do, make it appropriate for the new thing that you're doing. You don't wow. just do the same old thing. So. That's uh, yeah, because I mean, of course, the upright makes sense to tune you up there. Then, well, you just don't have the balance issues, yeah, and yeah. Uh, so that's what led it. this this instrument here. Then, this is one of the the first uh, of real uh, electric uprights. This um, this is I mean, Tony Levin made a lot of beautiful music with this bass, but he ran into some technical problems with it, so I end up with it right now. But mm. This was one of the very first serious electric uprights that I built. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, you can see it has a lot in common with what we're doing now, but still uh, this was was the uh, initial effort. Here, Mm -hmm. uh, we can plug this thing in too if you want, see what it sounds like. Oh, the neck is very interesting in the back here. Yeah, and look at the and the back. You see, it's got all these. This this yeah. was again. These were these ideas were eventually discarded. But this has you can see on the back here. Yeah. It has position markers for every match every fret, and they have mm-hmm. little little. Um, you know, this one doesn't have one, mm-hmm. but this has a marker here. So the idea is that you could feel where you are in the neck, um, mm-hmm. but you know, it's, it wasn't really necessarily what was needed. But wow. Well, completely different kind of construction then this fingerboard is actually wrapped around the f- face of it you know the fingerboard yeah, yeah, is just yeah. really thin uh, so this was how I got started on the upright basis um, 
and it evolved from there. But uh, the construction here is, is completely unique. Wow. Uh, and the idea too was with when you I was making five and six string mm -hmm. instruments. Mm -hmm. So when you have the big arch on the front of the fingerboard, mm -hmm. and then you have the curve on the back, when the, the wider the neck gets, the thicker the neck gets. So the idea of this was to cut right through that and to keep yeah. kind of an electric kind of a feel to it. You know, the yeah. thickness of it, um, like an electric bass guitar mm -hmm. or whatever, but still with the full width of the neck. So the construction and the shape and everything were, were involved for, for that purpose. That's and cool. we still make this kind of bass, although most of them have a conventional neck. I mean, wow. yeah. you know, a lot of the work I've done over the years is, you know, I kind of push, uh, push the boundaries and then I get the push back from musicians and say, oh, well, we like this, but really rather have a conventional neck. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's about, about making instruments that work for musicians. Yeah. But, you know, in my work, a lot of people who ask musicians what they want and then try to just do what the Come musician what says. Want, yeah. But mm, that's, I mean, I'm very much interested in giving musicians what they want. But on the other hand, I, I understand, I mean, you understand your music, I understand my instruments. So right. I have some ideas about things that I could do for you that you might not ever imagine. So if I ask you what you want, you're going to probably want things that are pretty much what you've become accustomed to and love. Right. But I'm interested in pushing the boundaries, so I, I can't just go with that or I'd be you know, making yeah. Fender uh, jazz yeah. basses, you know, but I don't, yeah. it's not what I'm interested in doing. Yeah. I'm interested in pushing the boundaries. So I try to learn, try to read between the lines, you know, try to think about what could I do yeah. that actually would be better than what you or some other uh, musician uh, who's uh, advising me on, on what I might do. I have to get somehow beyond that yeah. to really make it happen so it's I remember it's we challenge. talked about that when you know when I was first introduced to the the basses you know the Raiders and uh, and uh, I said you know about because in my thinking I was like hey look you know you're so used to that so if the next bass you're gonna play you expect that so when I talked to you and you explained this to me and that became very clear that you know sometimes just you play the instrument and then the instrument will lead you to what is correct so for me to spend time with the instruments and playing and understand the electronics and and the, even though i was getting confused a lot how i tune the bass and i'm like oh no by the way the, yeah. but that that really helps me to understand and then also the way the 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 the, the tuning pads they on the uh, the back that makes sense for me because then I get a lot of sustains. Now I'm starting to hear things that this bass is giving that I really, really like and, and, and understand it. So that makes sense because, you know, sometimes I can say, I like the bass to sound like that and you say, I'll make that bass, but it's not what I do, you know. And this is, and, and it's just brilliant, brilliant. Well, uh, sometimes, I mean, uh, uh, on occasion, I'll get a, an email or a call yeah. from a musician and they'll say, you know, your instrument inspired me to make the music I'm making. And I, I, I mean, I know that it's only a limited amount that the instrument can really do. I mean, the, the musician has to really come up with the instruments. Yeah. But still, yeah. the idea that, and that's, that to me is the most fantastic thing to think that yeah. maybe I've actually through these instruments inspired someone to 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 make art you know i yeah. mean that's 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 the greatest uh yeah, cause when you paint a picture me. you have to have the right tools you have to have the right brushes to to make that picture to tell the story and that's exactly what i you know i see with this instrument you know but i'll tell you something about that instrument then i love i love that fretless and you know, playing that fretless, uh, the one I played on the Graceland for many years, it took me years 
to uh, come up with something because that instrument now it's old and it's you know I'm starting to have some problems with you sure. know uh, yeah. noise and and it, it's something that they cannot be replaced so but I was looking for a fretless that can be close to that even more power this fretless it's unbelievable it's 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 got that it makes I mean, like my playing same way, like I can play the Graceland songs and have that same tone that I've had with my old bass with this uh, uh, Raiders fretless. I mean, it's just, well, that's uh, why I'm here that's, because that's, I really- that's, I, that's music to my ears. I really, I, sure. I, I love this stuff. And I tell you that this, this is one of the best fretless that I've ever played. I mean, I've tried some fretless, nothing come close to this fretless. Well, uh, Thank you. I will maybe, play maybe, it now. Maybe, just maybe make you sure can that play it a little bit for us. Yeah. 